Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, and today I want to ask kind of a dumb question. Well, you know, most of the questions we ask on this channel here are kind of dumb. It's either that or they're we're answering questions on, on topics that people specifically don't want me to talk about. Like, what would Luke and Leia's kids look like if they actually did the dirty dirty? Funny thing is, when I plug Luke and Leia's uh, faces into an AI baby maker kind of app, the image I get is usually just Adam Driver, who is an excellent actor. You know, I have no problems with him at all. He was great in Logan Lucky, but he does have that, you know, incest-like glow about his facial structure. I know a lot of like more disgruntled stars, uh, YouTubers, always make these long-winded videos where they talk about how they would rewrite the sequels to make it better. Well, well, the way I'd do it, I don't know if this would make it better, but I would include this uh, storyline that hints at the possibility that Luke is potentially Ben's father. And that would actually clear up a lot of things, right? Like Ben's hatred towards Luke. Uh, Luke feeling that responsibility to eliminate his spawn, which he created with his sister, you know? Which is not only like an affront to social norms, but also probably to the force. Like I have this theory that incest babies are more likely to go to the dark side. Like it has something to do with the midichlorians. Probably. This isn't canon yet. It's probably never going to be canon. You, this is probably also why you don't want random stars, YouTubers, um, headlining blockbuster films. As as terrible as the studios get it, like, I, I assure you, if you just picked random YouTubers, <laughs> why am I even talking about this? It's absurd. Anyway, today's dumb question is really focused on this idea whether a Force user can stop uh, midstream. With a focus on Shi Palpatine, who, because of his inability to stop midstream almost gets killed multiple times first when he's fighting against mace windu in his office and then he actually does get killed by vader when he gets picked up while shooting electricity into luke and i think ray also kills him in the same way in the sequels in a lot of ways vader and ray are kind of like assisting palpatine to suicide himself here because they're just redirecting his own terrible energy back into his face and this is why i've always wondered you know these powerful force users who can manipulate matter, do all sorts of crazy things. Why can't they just stop midstream while pissing lightning all over the place? Because I can't. You know, I can't stop my stream when I'm in a crowded urinal and the guy next to me is like a 70-year-old dude with his pants around his ankles. I don't know why he does that, but it's happened to me on many occasions. And then the guy on the right, right of me is like looking at my junk. You know, it's, it's not a comfortable situation. And then when you commit to start your stream, you usually have to stay in that position, not moving for like 20, seconds to a minute and 30 seconds which is like my record and i think like this is probably the most vulnerable a man is uh on an average day right it's at that moment you're at you're at the urinal you can't stop your stream so you can get attacked by anyone uh it could be a pp attack or a non-pp related attack and there's nothing you can do to defend yourself because you are in midstream I understand why this happens to me, but why does this happen to Palpatine, one of the most powerful Sith Lords, at least in several hundred generations? Well, let's take a look. What exactly is Force Lightning? So first of all, for those Sith purists out there, what Darth Sidious shoots out of his hands is technically Sith Lightning, and what Dark Jedi like Count Dooku or Luke in Legends is capable of is called Force Lightning. Sith Lightning apparently can only be used when a person has fully committed themselves to the Sith way. I think it has something to do with embracing the dark side fully and essentially losing control by allowing one's emotions to be taken over. Now let's forget out the force for one second and take a look at all of this energy coming out of these people's hands. This is electricity uh, that is visible, right? It's left its conductor and it's essentially turned into lightning. This is what happens when high voltage currents leave a conductor and hits open space. It ionizes the very molecules in the air, which is what creates all of that lightning and flash. This is also why you could smell ozone after a lightning storm. It's all of those nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the path of the lightning getting split up at the atomic level and creating nitric oxide, one of the building blocks of ozone and also your mom. So whether you're Palpatine or Dooku or just the Curious Jedi, lightning is just lightning. I mean, it doesn't matter what your emotional state is when you let it, you know, come out of your fingertips. This whole idea of like Sith lightning being better and different from other lightning just sounds like, uh, you know, I'm a special snowflake. You know, I could just see some mouth breathing uh, Sith doing all this gatekeeping to make himself 
feel special. It reminds me of like those online video games where you have people who put like 500 hours into a game and then like suddenly if you're new to the game and you don't know how to play, like you're the problem, right? How do Force users create this phenomenon then? I mean, the Force isn't completely magic. There are mechanics at play that can be explained, like midichlorians, which are these tiny little organisms that all Force users have inside of their bodies. They serve as conduits in between a Force user's consciousness and the energy field itself. And yes, the Force is an energy field, an extra-dimensional field made up of some type of magical particle that can be moved telepathically by some weird cells in your body. And it's most simplest, these force powers allow you to move objects around physically or sense incoming danger. But a true master can begin to manipulate the force to target things very precisely. Let's say you want to stop someone's heart, for instance. You can either squeeze it like a piece of fruit and destroy it, or or you could erupt the body's electrical system and cause the heart to stop in a more natural way. That would probably allow you to avoid any kind of suspicion that you've murdered this individual. You can also use certain force techniques to implant ideas into a person's head, or better yet, dig out some hidden knowledge from a person's head. And that requires you to literally use the force to rearrange how the brain works by, I'm guessing, directly affecting the neurons and the connections they make. It would actually be really cool to see the effects that a Jedi mind trick has on the brain. You know, you could put like the target in a CAT scan or something and just see what happens. Ethically speaking, I'm almost 100% sure there is some brain damage being done to the person who's receiving, uh, you know, the Force Mind trick. Ethically very concerning for the Jedi, not gonna lie. Now, how does one use the Force to create electricity? Well, what is electricity? It simply is a flow of electrons. It's not about the particles themselves, but their movement, which generates all of that volatile energy. And this is usually created by an electrical field, which is created from an imbalance in charge. You can think of electricity, this movement of electrons, like water flowing through a pipe from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. The electrons are just going from areas of high resistance to areas of low resistance. And that movement, that energy, again, is what powers all of your devices. Now, if these electrical currents somehow leave the conductive loop, it becomes volatile and potentially dangerous as it hits those gaps in the air we talk about, which is exactly what happens when a force user like Palpatine starts shooting Sith lightning from their fingertips. The stable loop, of conductivity is broken and the electrical currents branch out into the air looking to create new connections and usually they find a person or some other type of solid object. Now the human body has a large electrical system running through it. We send messages from the neurons in our brain through our nervous system to our muscles and then it's the electrical signals that make our muscles contract and move our bodies. The electricity in our body is created at the cellular level. Each cell can produce a tiny amount of electricity and this is because cells have these membranes which uh, basically serves as a type of insulation and I'm both sides of these cells have an unequal distribution of ions, ions like potassium, sodium, and chloride. It's that unequal charge that creates that kind of movement, that pressure that creates electricity. So while the charges individually in each cell are tiny, in total, the body can generate anywhere from 100 watts while resting, uh, which is enough to power a small light bulb, up to 2000 watts in small bursts, which can power smaller appliances like laptops. But the human body is built as a conductor of electricity. It's not really built as a capacitor or, you know, battery that can store a lot of energy and then just kind of shoot it out in, in lightning form. For that kind of transfer energy, you need a lot of energy. Now, there are creatures in nature that have evolved to do this without any kind of technology, like the uh, North American electrical rats and also the electrical eel. Most of its body is made up of organs that work like batteries and can generate powerful electrical currents that can stun prey. Now, the eel is able to shock other fish pretty easily when it's swimming in water because fresh water can be a pretty decent conductor. But let's say an eel needs to attack a target that is separated from it uh, by air. Let's say it's trying to attack a squirrel, which is, you know, talking sh to the eel and its family while it's underwater. The only way the eel would be able to shoot electricity at that squirrel is to make physical contact by leaping out of the water and like biting it or making some kind of contact. And that is again, because the, the eel, despite being very powerful, you know, it could definitely kill a human being that is in the water with it. It doesn't have enough power to break that connectivity and shoot electrical lightning into the air. 
The only time we see electrical currents in the air is when massive amounts of energy is used, either in lightning strikes or through some kind of high voltage device like a Tesla coil. And so when a force user is creating force lightning, they must somehow be manipulating the body's chemistry to create a massive charge at the cellular level. But here's the thing, uh, you know, even if you are able to mess around with the ions in your cells at the individual level, at one point, you'd probably end up destroying your cells before generating enough electricity to actually shock someone. Because, you know, despite a force user's powers, there's really no way to protect your cells from intense energy and heat that would come off of such a reaction. For instance, if too much of an electrical charge is introduced to a person's cells, it can actually lead to damage in their DNA, which will cause a cell to malfunction or reproduce in the wrong way. This essentially is what happens when Palpatine gets hit in the face with his own Sith lightning, which again, is just a live electrical current with some dark side intentions. It's doing horrible things to his body. Really, the only way for a human to build up electricity safely uh, is, is probably through static electricity. This is usually generated through friction. For instance, you could be walking on a carpet with socks or you could be rubbing a balloon uh, on your hair. The body then accumulates an imbalance of electrons and this is stored on one's skin or on one's clothing. And then you have the air around your body which serves as an insulator. The drier the air, the better because then you have higher insulation. It's said that in perfect condition, a human body can build up to 10,000 volts of electricity on the surface of his skin through static electricity. And this creates a lot of electrical potential. The only limitation though is the actual amount of energy being transferred and the weaker current. This means while static shocks can be very uh, painful and surprising, they don't really last that long and the actual energy being transferred usually is not going to be lethal or cause any kind of mark or damage. But at least we're getting somewhere. Now, the problem is the human body is just not designed to be a great capacitor or battery. As we mentioned before, not much in nature uh, is designed to be a battery, and even an electrical eel, which is designed to be a battery, doesn't have the capability of generating lightning in air. In our natural world, the closest thing we actually have to actual lightning is, is lightning, right? From, from a storm, which of course is a static charge buildup that occurs when ice and water particles rub against each other because of big shifts in temperature and air pressure. The electrical charges in lightning storms are actually stored within the clouds themselves. Those are the batteries. A lightning storm is really just one large capacitor. In this case, the cloud is a conductor and the ground is a conductor and it's being separated by this insulation, which is the air in the atmosphere in between. The reason why lightning storms are so powerful is because of the sheer scale of these clouds and all the molecules that are moving and making all of this static electricity. And so the only explanation for force lightning is that a force user like Palpatine is actually manipulating molecules that are on the surface of his skin to generate supernatural levels of charge by creating a lot of friction. The air around a force user should be shimmering from the sheer electrical energy being generated by this move. And at the same time, I think a force user would have to rearrange the molecules of the air in front of him to kind of provide a denser conductive path for that lightning to travel through. That's how you aim lightning. This is an extremely difficult and advanced technique that requires complete mastery of the force and tons of concentration. You're not just simply manipulating the environment around you. Uh, you're taking the force itself and then just rubbing molecules against each other at super high frequencies and super high quantities. And at the same time, you still have to direct all of this somewhere. Now, interestingly enough, a lightsaber, thanks to its plasma blade, provides an excellent conductor for that energy to flow through until it hits the ground. But it seems like if a force user is powerful enough, they can close off the plasma loop from being grounded, and then that will send the electricity craning out of the blade back towards the initial user. And since Palpatine is fully concentrated on these type of attacks already, it's very unlikely he's able to defend himself when that electricity comes back and hits him in the face. Now, when that violent dark side electrical current hits the body, it can do some pretty messed up things. Yeah, it's not just about your cells melting away. They're also like electrical systems in your body that you don't want to mess with, right? Your nervous system isn't just there to help you move your hands around. It also controls your breathing, your heart rate, you know, uh, some automatic systems that you cannot ground with. Plus, all of that energy going through your body generates a lot of heat and can cause burns inside and outside of the body. It's, it's gruesome. In some cases, it seems like Sith lightning can even directly dissolve flesh. But most importantly, when that electrical charge courses through your body, that's the same electricity that makes your muscles contract. Except in this case, the amount of electricity is probably too high, and so your muscles are spazzing out. And this is why your whole body generally seizes up when electricity is coursing through it. This is why it's extremely dangerous, for instance, to handle a live wire. Uh, with an open palm. 
well actually you should never ever touch a live wire in any situation without the proper equipment but if you are touching it don't touch it with the palm of your hands because if you get shocked most likely your hands are going to curl around the wire and it's going to be very hard to let go and that loop of energy is going to just cook you this is why electricians or trained professionals again you shouldn't be doing this in the first place but if you are going to test the wire out use the back of your finger or the back of your hand so that if you do get shocked your hand can quickly jump out of the way. I believe when Palpatine gets shocked by his own force lightning, what ends up happening is his entire body tenses up. And this includes his use of the force and all of the friction he is generating. This does not stop him whatsoever. And so essentially he gets locked into this extremely deadly feedback loop that he is creating. Which is why Palpatine, despite being all of the Sith and having all the power and resources in the galaxy, isn't all that different from you and me. All the force powers in the world and he still can't stop midstream. Last thing I really need to talk about here, uh, because we've talked a lot about how electricity works, please don't go home and try any experiments on you or your friends or your pets. Um, the individuals and stars who are using the force, these are professionally trained animals. So again, don't try this at home. Another thing, don't try to go home, go to the bathroom and stop midstream because in rare cases, people have died trying to do this. Guys, please don't throw away your lives because you're curious about whether you can stop midstream. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. I'll see you next time.